talk to you now about how to mix your own chicken feeds and some of the benefits of mixing your own feeds. I feed my chickens whole grains and there's a lot of benefit to that. I mean, if you think about it, if you had to eat dry cornmeal all day or you had the option to eat corn on the cob, what would you prefer? Well, of course, once the food is milled and dried up, um, you lose a lot of nutritional value and the longer it's exposed to the air, the more nutritional value you lose. So if you have feed for a month, then by the end of the month, it's a lot less nutrition in it than you had at the beginning of the month and of course a lot less than they had in it when they marked it on the bag because you know all of these things they're ground together they're milled up they're mashed together and then they're bagged and then they sit on the shelf and then they transport and then you sell it and you put it in your containers and you start feeding it and by then it's all dried up and powder half of what you throw in the chicken yard gets knocked out by the chickens and there's so much dust that it just becomes part of the ground they're not eating most of what you're giving them you know you're losing a lot so with whole grains, they're really not losing anything because if you throw some corn or some wheat in there and they scratch it and knock it around, it's still there and they're going to find it. They're going to go and pick it off the ground and eat it. Um, besides that, it's still full of the oils that are full of a lot of the minerals and amino acids and uh, omega-3s and all of the things that they really do need to be healthy and produce you know, really great eggs and high quality and high quantity. So you're getting a much better food in the whole grain than you would in the cracked or in the ground. Now if you have chicks and you have to give them ground or cracked, you can grind it yourself and you won't lose um, all those oils because you know they'll be fed immediately and it won't sit and dissipate. Um, so grinding yourself is always an option. But there are a couple of considerations you need to make and things you need to understand when you're mixing your own feed. You can't just give them anything. Uh, because they have to maintain a certain level of protein and a certain level of calcium and a certain level of calories to be able to produce and then all of the rest is a balance you know of, of aminos and omegas and vitamins and minerals and all so the three things that you're gonna want to watch the most though is gonna be your protein your calcium and your calories um, most of your store brand chicken food laying pellets for grown chickens that are laying eggs are gonna be a 14 to 16 percent uh, protein base now that is actually the minimum of what you can get away with. That is not the optimum of what you need to produce a lot of eggs. If you give them more protein, they're gonna produce more eggs, they're gonna be a better quality eggs, and they're gonna be healthier chickens. Um, there's a calcium level. Now here's the thing about calcium, not every chicken needs the same amount of calcium. So it's actually not so great to depend on a food-based source of calcium because uh, for example, your hens need a lot of calcium because they're producing a lot of eggshells. But your roosters, they don't need that much calcium, and a lot of calcium can destroy their kidneys and, you know, really make them sick. So, it's better, in my opinion, to put something like um, oyster shell in there so that they can go and pick as they need. The rooster doesn't have to eat it if he doesn't need that much. It's not mixed in with their food. Um, and if the hens need more, they can go and get as much as they need. Plus, the oyster shell kind of helps also in their gizzard with the breaking down of the whole grains. If you're feeding whole grains, you will need to give them some form of gravel or, or something that they can use in their gizzard to help break down these grains. Because remember, chickens have no teeth. And of course, like all living organisms, they also need a, you know, a fair amount of trace minerals to help them function and be healthy and, and live well. So. Um, these things are actually kind of low in the feed quality that you buy in store brand feeds. Now, you can buy local feeds and a lot of times they're mixed a little better and they'll have a little bit higher uh, protein and, and mineral quality, but they're still not going to be anywhere near what you can get. You can get so much better for so much cheaper if you mix your own. And of course we have great sound effects because one of the girls is laying an egg right now. So let's talk about different grains and what they have to offer and how you're going to need to mix this. Um, the first thing we're going to look at is protein. We're going to need a good protein source. Most of your grains, though they have some protein, they're not that high in protein. Probably, you know, your wheats and your corns, they have a little bit of protein, but it's not going to be enough. So you're going to need to add something. Some people put fish meal. Of course, if you're doing the things that I mentioned um, in the previous video about cutting your food costs, like maybe going to the fish docks and getting them fish, um, fish parts, fish throwaway fish, invasive fish, or whatever, uh, then you probably won't even need to do this. But if you're mixing your own feed, you're going to need to find a protein base. And for me, I find that the easiest thing to do is soybean. Soybean meal can have anywhere from 50 to 60% protein. That is huge. 
Here at the local co-ops, I can get a 50 pound sack of soybean meal for $15. But that $15 sack is going to probably last me a half a year because I'm not going to put that much of it because we don't need 60% protein, right? A chicken's going to optimally, like I said, 14 to 16% is what the standard is, but really they really need more like 20%, 20 to 25 will give you the maximum production and the healthiest chickens. If you want to test me on this, you can go and get a growing mash that is about 20% protein, which is going to cost you at a big box store about $20, um, and give them some growing mash for a day or two and see if their egg production doesn't just boom. Now you couldn't keep them on a growing mash because the growing mash doesn't have enough calcium in it. So then they won't have enough calcium so then the egg production will drop off. See this is the balance we have to keep. They need high protein but they also need to keep their calcium. But the growing, the laying pellets have enough calcium but not really enough protein. And the growing mash has a great amount of protein but not enough calcium. So mixing it yourself you can get your levels up on both. And I do that on the protein end with soybean meal. So I'm going to give you the ratios after we go through the list of the different things that you can use. All right, again, for your calcium, we talked about the oyster shell. Um, I use oyster shell. You just give them free access to oyster shell as much as they want, whenever they want, and you really don't have to worry too much about adding calcium to their diet. If you notice a bunch of cuts in this video, it's because I keep having to stop to cut out all of the truck noises because they're hauling in logs and grain next door. So anyway, again with the calcium, every chicken needs different levels. There will be some calcium in the grains and they will be getting some of that from their food source but it won't be enough. And so for me, I think the best option is just to give them all the oyster shell they want, then they can eat what they need and not what they don't. Um, another option for good quality calcium is to add the eggshells that you harvest back to their food source. But this is a little tricky because you have to be sure that you don't introduce it back in a way that they know they're eating eggshells because the last thing you want is to train your chickens to eat their own eggs. Um, what a lot of people will do is they'll keep their eggshells as they use them and then once they get a good bit of them, they'll put them in the oven for a little while and bake them for just, you know, 10-15 minutes just to change the smell and the taste of them. And then you'll put them in a coffee grinder, grind them into powder and then sprinkle that powder back into your food. It gives you a great, great high quality calcium. They're not really losing calcium, you're giving it right back to them. But you have to do it in a way that they don't know they're eating eggs. Coffee grinder, you can get a $20 coffee grinder and it works great. It will grind those shells into powder and you can throw it back. Um, but again, like I said, baking them or boiling them for just a little while will help to remove the smell and the flavor that they might associate with so that they don't think that they're okay to eat eggs. All right, whole wheat has about 14% protein, which is actually pretty good for um, a grain. So 14% protein with a good amount of vitamins and minerals and amino acids. Um, they're actually pretty good on their omegas also. So wheat is kind of balanced all the way around. It's a good food source. Uh, I know here from the co-ops, it's gonna run you about $10 per 50 pound sack. Oats, they run you about 9% in the protein. Um, and they're a pretty good source of minerals, probably of your grains. They're one of the better ones for your mineral source. Um, and they're high in fiber. So that's a good thing to add to it also. Corn, surprisingly enough, has very little nutritional value. It's mostly calories, um, so keep that in mind. For anybody that raises livestock, they'll be able to tell you that when you're feeding an animal corn uh, and you butcher, you open them up, they're full of fat. So uh, humans should probably limit their corn consumption after looking at the insides of animals that eat corn. You have to be careful with corn with your chickens because it will actually put so much weight on them that you'll end up with a bunch of fat bottom girls that can't lay their eggs because they just can't pass them. Like they will stop laying eggs if they eat too much corn. So you have to be careful with the corn not to put too much, but especially through your winter months, they do need some corn because it's gonna give them the calories and the energy that they need to produce those eggs and to keep their body heat up because chickens need to maintain a certain level of body heat for them to be able to produce those eggs also. So we do want to put some corn because corn is good for calories. Um, it's got a lot of sugar in it. It's good for, it's got about a 10% protein. So it is a, a protein source. It's got about 10% um, and it does have a few vitamins and minerals, but not much. Flaxseed is great to add if you can get it. It's not so easily available 
um, but it is a 25% protein and it has a lot of minerals in it, a lot of minerals. It's really, really healthy. It's good for them. Um, it's actually good for any animal and it's good for you too. But getting it in large quantities is not as easy as say like the soy meal, which is even higher protein, but doesn't have as much on the mineral base. So what you could do is if you feel like they're lacking in minerals in their diet, you can go to any co-op and get blackstrap molasses by the five gallon bucket load for very cheap and add that and that is loaded with minerals. But if they don't need it, I don't recommend because I just don't like feeding a lot of sugar, even though the blackstrap doesn't really have, it's only got about a 45% sugar ratio and it's mostly minerals. So it's not terrible, but uh, typically don't really too much even need it if you get a good balance of your whole grains. Another good option to mix in with either your home made feed or your store brand feed like if all you can get is a store brand feed but you still want to up the protein and the calcium and the mineral content of it you can buy calf manna calf manna is um, a feed that is full of protein and minerals and calcium um, I have to look up the protein gun. I think it's like a 25% protein I'm not sure I'd have to check on that I'll put it on the screen um, but it's loaded with vitamins and minerals and calcium and all of these things. So you can mix some of that in, uh, check on the bag for the ratio because you don't need a whole lot for your chickens because obviously it's made for baby calves to help support them in their growing stage. It's called calf manna. You can mix that in with your store brand feed which will help to give it a boost in nutrients. You can also mix together laying pellets and growing uh, mash and some calf manna and get a pretty good quality feed, but that's gonna be a little bit expensive because the calf manna is pretty high. I want to say it's like $35 a sack. So you're not really saving money with that. You're just helping to boost your egg production. But you could put a little bit of calf manna in with your mixed feed, which I will be doing just because I have some. I really wouldn't go out and buy it just for this, but I have some left over that needs to be used. So I'm going to mix it in. But it is a, an extra source of, of boost for your animals if you can't mix your own or you can't get any of these other things and you just want to give them more because their laying is down or maybe they're molting or you feel like they need a little boost, you can give them that calf manna and it really will help them out. All right, now I'm going to give you the cost breakdown of what these feeds cost me uh, per pound and per 50 and what it's going to cost me once they're mixed. Um, and basically this is what it comes down to. A 50 pound sack of soy costs $15, which comes to 30 cents a pound, but I'm only gonna use one third per mixing, all right? So if I use a whole sack of wheat and a whole sack of corn and a whole sack of oats, that's 50 pounds each, I'm only gonna use one third of a sack of the soy. The wheat cost me $10 for a 50 pound sack, which comes out to 20 cents per pound. The oats cost me $10, which is 20 cents per pound. The corn costs $6, which comes to about $0.12 cents per pound. If I'm doing one part wheat, one part corn, one part oats, and one third part soy, that's going to come out to $11.50 per 50, which is 23, yeah, 23 cents a pound. So that's not bad. So basically, though, what I'm creating there is a 30 to 35 percent protein which is actually more than you need so if you want it you could actually even cut that back more and probably drop your price down to about nine dollars per 50 um, but keep that in mind that with the box stores the laying pellets that you're buying are only 14 to 16 percent and you're paying 15 dollars a sack so the best you can get is maybe a 20 or 25 in a game bird and that's costing you well over 20 to 30 dollars per sack depending on the brand that you're getting. So you're getting way better than that for $11 a sack. So even if you didn't cut it back to, you know, you could cut the protein down to say 25, 20, but I like to keep it about 30. You know, it'll be, it, I'd rather have a little more than not quite enough. So 30% protein for $11 a sack is a great price for the production that you're going to get out of that, for the production that you're going to get out of your eggs, and for the health of your chickens. Um, you just can't beat it. I mean, the way I see it is if I'm paying for a 14%, but they're hardly laying, then I'm really wasting money because I'm feeding them for nothing. I'd rather pay for a greater quality food um, and create it myself and get, because when I wasn't, when I was using store brand laying pellets, I was getting like five eggs a day from my 11 
hens. I have 11 hens, all right? I was getting like five, sometimes six eggs a day. Um, but when I switched to this method, I'm getting literally 11 eggs a day. I'm getting an egg from every hen every day. And one of these hens is old, like five years old. Like she is really old and she's still dropping an egg a day. So this is like really, really good feed. So again, doing one sack of each and a third, one sack of corn, one sack of wheat, one sack of oats, and a third sack of soy meal. I'm getting a 30 to 35 percent protein feed mix that is full of minerals, vitamins, amino acids, omegas. This is a healthy food and they're gonna love it and they really won't even eat as much so it lasts you a lot longer than the same amount of the store brand. And you're getting it for half to a third of the price. Oh my gosh! For those that met Theo in the other video when he was a puppy, he's still a puppy, but he's a really big puppy. And he's annoying sometimes, but we still love him. Ow! Say hi to the people, Theo. Hannah, whip his butt. Alright, this is the wheat. This is white wheat. You can use white or red. Actually, the red's probably a little healthier, but it's not always accessible, so you can use whatever. Um, and of course we can grow this in fodder. Also we can sprout all of these grains because they're whole grains and I can show you how to sprout grains too um, for a little extra nutrition. But here you That's go. my oats. It looks kind of like skinny wheat. And I'm mixing because of the size of my container. I'm doing half bags. Alright, I guess we all know what corn looks like. So this is our, our dried corn. And yes, chickens can eat whole corn without cracking it without any trouble. Um, of course your babies, you would have to crack this for them, but the whole chickens, they can eat it just fine. It's better for them because the minerals and the oils and all the healthy stuff is actually still in there when it's whole. Alright, this is the soybean meal, and of course the reason you're getting meal on the soybean and whole on everything else is because the soybean is kind of big um, and hard, and so it, it's kind of difficult for them to eat the soybean as opposed to the others. They can handle a little better. Um, so. Adding beans and peas to your mix can actually add a good source of protein also, but this is the easiestly accessible, best priced, and easiest for them to digest and consume. And it's just the highest protein so that I can come across that's just easy, so it works. So here we go. Here's our soy. I'll add that into the mix. And this red stuff, this is the calf manna. I didn't figure this into the computation of what I told you with the 30 to 35 percent protein. This is actually going to add a, a, a little extra, more, more so in the uh, calcium and mineral department. You don't have to do this. I didn't consider this into the calculations that I gave you. I'm just adding this because I have it and I need to use it up. Um, it is a good option if you don't have access to the, these other things, but if you do, you don't need it. You don't have to have it, but it doesn't hurt to add it if you want. It's good Theo. Apparently Theo approves, so. All right, and you don't want to mix this in such huge portions that you can't stir it or else mix it, you know, a couple scoops at a time, one of each. Um, I did the portions I gave you, you know, one whole sack of corn, one whole wheat, one whole uh, oats, and a third of the soy. Um, I kept those ratios, but I did half of that. So I did a half a sack of corn, a half a sack of wheat, a half a sack of oats, and a, a one sixth of a sack of soy, just so I would have smaller portion to deal with, because I have to move this tote after I mix it. I didn't want it too heavy. Now, doesn't that look more appetizing to you than those old ground pellets? I think they're gonna like this.